On June 28th, Leah is at her friend Sherry's house visiting. The two get into an argument, and Leah storms out of the home. And that's shortly before 9 PM. When I first interviewed Sherry back in 2010, she told me that Leah was very upset when she left her house that night. Oh, she was pissed. I remember her saying to me, I'm sorry, I'm not good enough for you. And it was, I, apparently, it was just shortly before 9, like 5 to 9, I guess. This is an, an overview of the area that we're talking about, Coquille, Oregon. We know from Sherry, Leah leaves on foot. She walked down 4th Street and turned left on Central Boulevard. She was seen walking by McKay's Market. We have witnesses that put her at the fast mark. Then we have a sighting of her at a, a restaurant that's a little farther up. The next sighting we have is Leah up here by the high school. The people that saw her said she had her arms crossed and looked angry. So she was probably angry about the argument she just had right. at the house. Right. The next witness says that around 9.30 PM, she sees Leah standing outside a payphone. And there are two men arguing nearby. Next time we see Leah, she's standing outside the gas station. And that's the last time that anyone sees Leah. Several minutes later, a witness hears a high-pitched scream. And nobody saw anything suspicious. Stranger pick her up or mm -mm. stranger driving around town. Not, not to my knowledge. It was 9 o'clock. I went to go over to Sherry's to go get Leah. I asked her where Leah was. I said, we got in a fight. She left. She's probably walking home. You know, I'm sure that if you just drive to her house, you'll find her. It's not a very big town. You can walk through from Sherry's to the high school in a matter of minutes. So Nick gets back into his car and starts driving through the town of Coquille looking for Leah. I drive too fast, Mark. I had asked multiple people if they'd seen Leah walk by. And about 9 o'clock at night, I see Nick pull up. And he says, is Leah here? And I said, no. Nobody had seen her. I remember going by the high school. I had a very strict curfew of 10 o'clock. As I was driving back home, I uh, came to the stop sign by the high school, and I saw Nick driving by in his Mustang. So I drove by Leah's house because I didn't see her. He did call the house shortly after 10 that night. He said, is Leah there? And I said, Leah, no, isn't she with you? And he goes, well, he goes, it's all right, don't worry. I'm going to go find her, and I'll bring her home. I know I went back to Fastmart probably five or six times. He had looked every place that he could think of and couldn't find her. I mean, I had even talked to police twice that night. My headlight was out, and I got pulled over for it both times. I told him that I you know, was looking for my girlfriend, and uh, he told me to get it fixed. After getting pulled over two different times by police, Nick decides to go to his friend Kristen and ask her to drive around with him to look for Leah. And Kristen drives around with Nick for an hour. I dropped Kristen off around 2 o'clock, probably. I decided to go by Leah's house one more time. And I saw a glare on her, on her window. Thought it was her TV. Back then, it was 2000. It's not like I, she could send me a text. She couldn't call me on a cell phone. And so I thought she was home. And I went home after that. And I looked in her room, and her bed was empty. <laughs> Leah's mom, Corey, calls at like 7.30 or 8 in the morning the next day. I said, where's Leah? She's not here. He goes, she didn't come home last night? And I said, no, where is she? He goes, I don't know. I went into town as, as quick as I could. I talked to Corey. We went down to the police department, and we filed a missing persons report. The police basically told us that she, Leah was probably a runaway. I knew. I knew something was wrong. This girl had no reason to run away. She had absolutely no reason. 
none. I handed out flyers with, with people everywhere, every town. Have you seen Leah? Nobody, nobody seemed to know anything. I don't remember what date it was. The police called me. They wanted to talk to me. So, of course, I'm going to go in and I'm going to help them. Today is June 30th. It is 1348 hours. This is a statement of Nick McGuffin, a missing person case involving Leah Freeman. Nicholas James McGuffin. People tend to think, if I'm innocent, I don't have anything to hide. The problem is, even though you think what you're saying is, is fine and it's going to be helpful, it can be turned back upon you in a second. How would you characterize your personality? When she's around me, I don't know, she just seems really what? bright and happy-go-lucky and giggly. She's just a really good person. I started to have my concerns when I kind of started, I guess, trying to twist my words with the way I speak. Did she ever have problems at home? Her parents are divorced. And her depression maybe has a lot to do with her childhood. And, depression. huh? What depression? I know you were telling me she was happy-go-lucky. She is. Happy. She is. The first week, they actually wanted to look at my Mustang. I signed it over to them immediately. I did not have anything to hide. There was nothing that I was worried about. The night that Leah disappeared, it's about 11.40. The mechanic worked the swing shaft. He's driving home, and he saw a shoe lying in the road. Thought maybe one of these kids had left a shoe out there, so he picked it up, took it home. And then when it came out in public that we were looking for Leah, that person came forward with the shoe. We showed it to uh, Leah's sister. She said, I think that's her shoe. Then, on the 4th of July, just six days after Leah went missing, her other shoe is discovered, and it's got blood on it. This point here is where her right shoe is found on North Elm Street. Leah's blood-stained left shoe is found on Hudson Ridge. The distance from where the left shoe is found on Hudson Ridge back to the town of Coquille is about 10 mile stretch. When at first the case first started, Corey felt she wasn't being taken seriously by the police department. When we had that second shoe with her blood on it, I think everybody felt that uh, this was not going to end well. I don't know if the second shoe gave me more questions or if it solidified the horror that we were about to find out. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.